Man, you gotta check out those killer exhibits. Here's a look at the Boss Fight Studio Vitruvian Hacks Series Z, Alex Nicolaitis. As a professor responsible for the running of the National Museum of Antiquities in Athens, Greece, Alex never expected to have to use the exhibits to save his own life. When a member of the public turned and ate a security guard during an otherwise thrilling adventure of cataloging, Alex smashed open one of the exhibit cases, snatched up a replica Zypho sword, and beheaded the zombie. Normally a shy, retiring man, Alex soon became notorious in Greece for his actions. Arrested for murder, he was put on trial until the prosecution case collapsed when the judge turned during a cross-examination. As terror reigned in the courtroom, Alex acted, taking Exhibit A in hand, the sword he had already used to dispatch one monster. He saved the lives of everyone in the courthouse. thought museums were boring. Before we get a closer look, though, at Alex Nicolaitis, the first thing we're going to want to do is take this trusty tape measure of mine that's currently blocking the view of poor Alex, and we're going to measure it to the very top of his head. While I'm doing this, I'd like to as well thank the folks over at Boss White Studio that provided this sample of Vitruvian hacks, Alex Nicolaitis, that we could have a look at in this review. The figure stands 5.1 inches in height. We can switch that then over to centimeters and looking at Alex Nicolaitis from Vitruvian hacks standing 13 centimeters exactly. Wait, didn't you just have a look at a Vitruvian hack zombie figure not too long ago? I did, sir. Thank you very much for reading the script successfully. We're going to actually move over Alex Nicolaitis, and we're going to bring in the previously looked at Vitruvian Hacks Irradiated Zombie. Providing, of course, I can get him to actually stand properly. There we go. They're going to be about the same height to one another. Of course, one has a lot more skin and isn't glowing as much as the other, but they at least fit all well in, and really all the Vitruvian Hack figures are scaled appropriately. You can mix and match the lines and come up with your very own scenario and display. The figure gets a bunch of accessories. We'll start first with the display stand. It is, in fact, the same display stand that we did get with the irradiated zombie. More of like that concrete surface with a couple of peg holes. I'm tapping right now with my fingers on either side to help display and stand the figure upright. Made of hollow plastic, so you can see the other side right there. Boss Fight Studio. Put that to the side. Of course, yeah, you by all means, you can use that for a display stand. Just attach the figure on the top there, and you get the good to go. He also comes with a couple of other things, too. I say a couple of other things. I mean, look at all the stuff he comes packaged with. Why don't we look at uh, a corpse of a zombie? Yeah, why not, right? We'll look at a corpse of a zombie. What's left, certainly, of the zombie, all the entrails running out here. You can see it's basically just the top of the torso, part of the arm. The other arm's gone, and there's some pegs on the bottom of these as well. Uh, the zombie itself, for, for, again, what little there is of it, is nicely painted, down to the fact that even like the intestines are all bloody and wet. Love that. And actually all the Vitruvian Hack Z figures, the, the series Z that we're going to be looking at, all coming kind of with parts of zombies. So you can get yourself quite the fun diorama when it's all said and done. I'll put that also to the side. Uh, the figure comes with a spear. We'll start with a spear. The spear, as you can certainly see, is quite the long weapon for him to be wielding in hand. On the very ends of it, they've been painted in gold, with the handle being in brown, and then ending up the touches on the other side. Not only do you get a gold point, but this one also is covered in blood. Nice, shiny, crimson red blood. The figure also comes included with two variations of sword. The hilts, as you can certainly see, are different from one another, still using the same shared gold color. The broadness and length of the swords certainly does vary between the two. And actually, the way that they've complemented, we're going to go complemented, the blood, also a little bit different on both. This one is a little bit more saturated. This one looks like it's more streaky. Very cool looking swords, though. And then, to protect his head, he comes with a couple of headdress helmets. They vary from one another, as you can certainly see right there. This one I feel is just, well, I feel like you would get the same effect from wearing either one of the helmets, but I think when you start wearing a helmet like this, you're doing it more so for yourself. You're wanting to draw attention to everybody, well, 
draw attention from everybody. Hey, look at me, guys. I've got quite, look at this elaborate helmet. I think I would have been a little bit more modest with my choosing of helmet. I probably would have just gone with this one. Uh, they are nicely painted, though, done in the gold. And then, of course, the feathers on the top, they're painted nicely in red. Either one of these, by the way, we can go ahead and pick the figure up. You can wear either one of these if you want to go the more elaborate routes. These are softer plastic, by the way. So they fit generally pretty good on Alex's head. You just want to make sure that you have it low enough so he can actually be able to see straight through those eye holes. But there's one of them with the more elaborate headdress along the top. And then my favorite of the two, I'm going to take this one off, is this one here. And again, softer plastic. These flaps on the front are softer, so they fit pretty good over top of the face. I like to just kind of bring these in a little bit after I fit it over top of his head. And again, you want to make sure that his eyes are still... He has to be able to see after all. No good in being protected by armor if you can't actually make out what's in front of you. That's what he looks like with the helmet on. Again, this is my favorite of the two. The figure also includes... Oh, wait, there's more. The figure also includes two swappable heads. Two different heads, depending on which one you would rather want to go with. This one sports the beard with a little bit of additional gray. For some reason, it reminds me of Hugh Jackman from Logan. And then this one is more clean shaven with longer hair on the sides. So you can have two different looks for the character or two different looks of different figures, really, if you want to. All you do is just take the head, pop it off. And then you'll notice with each of the heads, they actually have their own ball joints. So you don't have to worry about fighting to get those back out. Just bring that a little bit further forward. And go ahead and just root that in place. I'm honestly not sure which head sculpt I prefer between the two. This guy right here, this head sculpt that I'm going with right now, trying my best to get it actually onto the neck. There we go. I think as someone that looks like he'd be a little more unstable if he starts picking up weapons inside of a museum. This one seems, this head sculpt seems like he's a little bit more reserved and then finally one day just snapped. But again, you can pick which one you'd rather go with. Perhaps what I may do is just stick with this head sculpt for the remainder of this review, and I'm going to just make sure I've got the head all the way rooted onto the neck. There we go. Looking at the rest of the figure, he's wearing himself a sports coat of a more darker blue-based gray, and then underneath that, he's got himself a button-up shirt with some pockets on either side. It's a very nice tailored jacket, softer plastic. Of, you wouldn't really be able to remove it because still the sleeves of the arms would stay behind. Flip the figure around. One thing I did actually do, I noticed earlier, there was this little bit of plastic. I don't know why I felt the need still to keep that in the review, but just want to take that off there. Softer plastic, like I said, on the jacket. Uh, nice looking slacks. Would you consider those khakis? I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I'm not sure. I'm not up with trending fashions. I think those are just kind of casual slacks. They drape quite naturally there on his legs. Sculpting on them is quite good. Spin, spin around so you can certainly see it from the back. And then, of course, the last of the accessories he comes included with a couple of other swappable hands. If you are picking up these Vitruvians for yourself, uh, when you take the figure out of the tray, just below the tray, there's a little baggie that will include the extra hands and the display stand. So just make sure you don't leave that behind. One last look at looking at the head sculpt. I do, yes, have a little bit of fleck of paint there on the top of his forehead. Probably could try to take that off. But I kind of like this head sculpt. He, you know, he looks like he's a little bit... He looks like someone who's more capable of wielding weapons. Speaking of wielding weapons, let's go ahead and take one of the swords. Now, the hands are more of a softer plastic. It's a little bit more easier to bring the fingers away from the palm and then fit the hilt of the sword in place. And then you can just bend the elbow. And then, of course, if you guys are curious to see what it looks like with the helmet, the hair on this head is a little bit more wider, so you're not going to have as much success getting the helmet properly in place. It sort of then results in the front flaps being a little wider, and it's probably just the shape of his head sculpt. And if you want to see, let's get the other... I took the helmet off and removed the head in the process, but let's just remove the head, get the head back into place. There we go. And we'll go with the more elaborate head, just in case you want to see what that helmet looks like. Again, fit it over top of his head. A little wider to fit it over top of his facial frame, but that's what it looks like with the helmet in place. 
try our best to keep the head in place this time. Taking the sword out of his hand, let's have a look at the articulation here on Alex. So his head rotates all the way around, sitting, of course, on that ball joint. Rotates all the way around, hinges up, hinges down, and back and forth. The arms comfortably come out at a 90-degree angle bend. A little tighter on this figure, but still will get the job done. You can also take the arms, rotate them all the way around as well. He has a hinge in the elbow, which of course will allow the forearm to rotate back and forth. The hands also rotate all the way around. He has an upper torso ball joint. He has a lower torso swivel. The legs split out. Jacket, of course, as you can see, doesn't get in the way of things. I like the color choices that he's going with his wardrobe here. Wish I could really be able to do that myself. Anyways, the legs move forward and back. He has a double hinge on the knee. And then when it comes to his feet, they move up and down, and you can also rotate them back and forth as well. I find myself actually liking this head sculpt, I think, a little bit more than the original one that we looked at. To be fair, though, again, we want to bring this head sculpt back in. This one, I think, fits better, tailored a little bit better for the helmets that come included with it. I don't know if just this one seems a little bit wider of a face, but this one has a little more of a difficulty holding the helmets on his head. Whereas this one right here, the one that looks a little bit more like Hugh Jackman for me, I think looks a little bit more comfortable wearing those helmets than this one does right here. But one good thing about, again, the Vitruvian hacks is for all the things that they come packaging these figures with, you can mix and match them. You can use the heads from other figures as well. You can even take really the irradiated zombie. How fun would that be? Pop the head and put it on here instead. But overall, nice looking figure is Alex Nicolaitis. I certainly don't want to think I would want to have his job. Already working for a museum, I would imagine, be quite boring. But then having to deal with the undead, boy, that would be a bit of a bummer. Talking about a bad day at work. Alex, at one point, may have been mocked by his friends and colleagues for pursuing what they considered a boring career in history, working at the National Museum of Antiquities in Athens, Greece. That is to say, until things hit the fan and you had a zombie outbreak happening, Alex wasn't worried. He had Greece and all its history behind him, retrieving artifacts of swords, spears, and other things that he can inflict damage upon the undead. The same couldn't be said for his stupid friend Steve who for 15 years or so worked at World of Tiles. I don't even know why, first of all, stupid Steve would even be mocking Alex for working in a museum when you work at World of Tiles. Stupid Steve didn't last very long. Yeah, sure, he can upsell customers on marble tiling, but marble tiling isn't going to protect you against an army of the undead. Learn your lesson, stupid Steve. Don't criticize people with their other career paths. Alex Nicolaitis, as you can certainly see, does come packed with a lot. I've got here on the final looks, displaying and rotating on the turntable rotisserie, him with a broad sword and spear. Little excessive, you may say, not excessive enough, I would say. He comes also packaged with another helmet. Now, I know I with this face head sculpt, I ended up swapping it back to the one that had the beard, you know, the one that kind of looked like Hugh Jackman, just because I find it fits the helmets just a little bit better than the other, hel the other head sculpt that he comes packaged with. But again, that's the beauty of these Vitruvian hacks is the fact that they come with so many things that you can mix and match. And if you just decide for yourself that you don't, you don't want to have the beard with a little bit of gray showing, then yeah, pop off the head sculpt. That came actually, I made that sound myself. Pop off the head sculpt with the alternate head and then you can display him with that instead. And if you have more than one of these, then yeah, you can also display Alex with his two different looks. Love the look of this figure. And he's so casually dressed as well while he's inflicting damage to the undead. I really like this one and being a fun figure release from the folks over at Boss Fight Studio. A big thank you to the folks over at Boss Fight Studio, by the way, that prov provided this sample of museum curator Alex Nicolaitis that we could have a look at in this review. Alex did fare better than Stupid Steve. Just always be aware that when you criticize other people for the path they take career-wise, you sort of have to also be able to look at yourself as well and say, you know, you know what, I do work at World of Tiles. How exciting is my job anyways that I probably shouldn't have been, I probably shouldn't have said anything bad about Alex. Anyways, stupid Steve's dead anyways. You never really want to upsell people on tiles. Let them come in with the idea that they have in mind. Choose the tiles that they had planned in to get in the in the first place. Don't think I'm, I'm just going to start upselling them to the marble. You know, you you like the, these ones, but go with the marble instead. Stupid, stupid Steve.
If you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and keep your peepers peeled because we will be looking at more Vitruvian Hack Zero Series Z, Z for zombie after all, in upcoming reviews. So make sure you keep your zombie peepers peeled to this channel. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.